Okay, okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the first ever Grad One Go podcast. I'm Nada, and with me is Nabil Marie from Team Grad One as well. Um, so, Grad One podcast is something we've always wanted to do and host. Um, you know, just an avenue for discourse on various topics ranging from employment, lifestyle, and many others. So I would like to thank all of you for tuning in with us today. Um, once again, tonight, we are privileged to have um, Mr. Chen Fong Tuan, who is the HR and General Affairs Director of Samsung Malaysia, to share more on you know, the big question, what do employers really want? Um, we'll also be accepting questions via the chat box below. But before that, let me welcome um, Mr. FT. Hey. Hello. Hi, FT. Hi, hi, hi. How's everyone? Good, good. How are you? Good, good. Good to be here. Uh, honored to be invited to be on the very first uh, inaugural one. So <laughs> I feel yeah. very privileged. <laughs> yeah, you, me and Nada was talking about we're going to do the first one. The first person we're going to invite is FT. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because you're the most interesting HR person and the one that does the most innovative uh, in my experience. In and I think sure. we appreciate the fact that you are honest and candid on yeah. you know, your thoughts, which is what we really would like to hear on today's session, which is you know the whole hoo-ha about what do employers want? Has it evolved over the years? Or is it basically the, the same core values has always been you know, what is most needed? Um, so maybe I'll just start off um, you know, with just asking you, um, what sort of a candidate were you like? You know, when you were a student, like in uni, were you the you know president of every single club, or you were were you the kind that would you know just skip lectures and go straight for you know just studying on your own at home, or very visible, or you know, who is FT actually? Okay, um, okay. Uh, firstly, is uh, thank you that you know you think I'm candid. Uh, I try. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a lot easier to be candid than you know always putting up front and so on. So I don't, uh, which you know helps as well. And uh, if you guys were listening in, uh, if you need to know, I was sent a list of questions uh, that you know uh, Team Graduan sent me. I had a look at it, but I have no idea. Cannot remember a single one, a single question right now. So I mean, it's just going to be me shooting in the dark. So this question was a uh, not. In the list of questions. Yeah, I alters. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember that. Um, what kind of a student am I? Um, well, I'm blessed with a, a good memory. So normally that's a uh, kind of pass, uh, uh, like a secret word for being lazy. Yeah, okay? let's put it that way. Some people who are, you know, you, are, you have good memory, therefore you don't have to study so much because you, you, you look at something that you remember. So that's one, one of it. Uh, secondly, is uh, I was a lot skinnier than, than I, I am right now. I, I'm not too big anyway now, so, but I was a lot, a lot skinnier. So uh, not very good built for sports, uh, particularly uh, those you know, rugby and football or whatever. So I can't, you know, too small, and too skinny. So I need to choose something else to do. So I played uh, anything to do with records, right? Uh, and obviously badminton, you know, table tennis and so on. So I, I, I spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, so again, you know, good memory, uh, loves to do other stuff, lazy. So again, right? Uh, bit lazy, right? And the third one is, uh, am I a president of uh, a, lot, a lot of clubs? Not really. Uh, I remember I was president for two clubs uh, and they are not like the, champion clubs that everybody wants to go to. Uh, one is called the Geek Club, right? The Geek Club is called Club Science Done Mathematic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that, that obviously nobody <laughs> wants to join. Uh, but that's why maybe I'm president uh, because, uh, you know, for the lack of a, a, a petition. Yeah, and the second one, I'm the uh, captain of uh, Persatuan Bulan Sabit Merah. Uh, wow. it, it is not a, a, a very popular persatuan because the all the guys that are macho will join cadet police or something mm. or, scout, or like you know those those uh, scouts right yeah. so they say that all these uh, persatuan bulan sabit lah all these are for girls one 
So again, for the lack of a choice, so uh, I was chosen as well. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, I, I get by. Um, academically, it's a lot easier for me because uh, I don't study a, a lot. Uh, I would take the minimum all the time. If SPM 8 is minimum, I'll take minimum. If A-levels 3 is minimum, I'll take 3. If university allows me to take like no subject at all and pass, I would do that as well. So, yeah, but I, I do well in my exams. I do well uh, in my exams. Therefore, I'm a privileged. That's what I'm saying. I'm privileged to be blessed with a good memory. However, my memory is failing now because, uh, you know, umur dah meningkat. So, umur dah meningkat. The, you know, uh, cell also, all, a lot of them dah mula deteriorate. So, nowadays, I'm a bit more diligent. Uh, I need to read more. I need to, or, or else I can't remember and recall some of these facts. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for that. But take us back to your university life. Uh, where do you go university in? I was a Tanaga scholar. So I did my A-levels in Malaysia. Then uh, I was sponsored to do electrical electronic engineering in University of Sussex in Brighton. Um, and you ask if there are people who has been long enough, uh, they will know that Tanaga, Tanaga always send their uh, scholars to Brighton. Um, but not yeah to Brighton, but not my university. It was a university that is a neighbor to my university, so it's called University of Brighton. So I'm go. I I went to University of Sussex, which is uh, in front uh, of the normal university that Naga sent their scholars to. So yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. Uh, electrical and uh, so your first employer must be TNB lah. Absolutely. So yeah, and then how? Uh, please take us through like from. What, what were you doing in TNB when you first, as your first job? Wow, this sounds like, a, it really sounds like an interview, you know? <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> yeah. Please tell us about your first job and so on. Okay, <laughs> let me, let me, let me uh, go through. I normally interview people and don't get interviewed so often. On the job. So let, let me try. Um, I came back in, uh, in, in 1998. Yeah. So that time was really, really bad because it was the global financial yes, uh, yeah yeah so I, I was very lucky because obviously you know i don't need to look for a job uh, i have a job uh, and it was ready for me but the bad thing is i don't get to choose what i want to do now if you're a scholar very unfortunately for many scholars uh, you don't get to choose yeah uh, because you already owe the company lots of money now the company wants to recoup their investment therefore they will put you whatever so my first job in tanaga was in johor bahru Okay. Uh, I'm, an, I'm an agree boy. I'm from the Greece Milan. Uh, so I've never been working before. I've never yeah. uh, worked in another, another city uh, in, in Malaysia. So Johor Bahru was totally new. And, and um, the job was a bit weird. I was a facility engineer. I'm an engineer, right? So facility engineer. So what, what is facility engineer? Technically, is you look at, uh, I'm a facility engineer for the building, for the Tanaga building. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So Tanaga building, yeah, I have one building. So you look at, uh, you know, water, you look at, uh, you know, uh, in charge of the charge man, you look at all this uh, facility stuff, uh, including stationary. Like. So I was thinking, oh, I studied three and a half years in the UK to come back and manage facility and, you know, meter, water. It's a bit weird. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't like it. Um, so I, spoke to headquarters, uh, said, maybe you should move me somewhere else. And I am from Negris Milan. I want to work in my own uh, state. It's, it's a way la, for me to, yeah, la, yeah, la. To, to get out of that, right? So I say, okay, okay. You know, I miss my mom. I haven't been back for long. I miss my, you know, everything about Negris Milan. I miss, you know, Masa Minang and so on. <laughs> they said, okay. Lagging Salai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they then said, okay, Ken, uh, I'll send you back to do uh, brunch management. Go to brunch, go to all these. Uh, you know, oh, brunch. So I can't go to brunch. I went back to uh, where I went after uh, three months in Johor uh, was Port Dickson. So I was the consumer engineer in Port Dickson. So it was a good experience. Uh, let me tell you a very interesting story. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, almost the first job, right? Three months in Johor Baru Takira. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Totally Takira. So this time is the first time. And in brunch, wow, well, you're very big. An engineer is like number two in the, in the brunch, number two. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm only 21 years old. Uh, 
I was about to ask, aren't you, weren't you like 21? 21? No idea. Uh, so my first uh, was Monday. Uh, I remember Monday. Uh, I went to the office. Lah. And that time, at that time, Tenaga starts uh, at 7.30. Okay. Kita habis 4.30 lah. Okay. 7.30. So I went 7.30. Okay. Okay. So I parked then 7.30. Uh, tak ada orang. Complete empty. 7.30, I'm supposed to report for duty. My boss wasn't there. The door was locked. Nobody was there. I'm like, I, I need... Silap, silap hari bulan ke? Yeah. Then the, the guard told me, oh, no, no, no. Cik, they are all dekat yard. In Tenaga Yard, our store, somewhere. That is where every Monday, they'll go there, sing Tenaga song, Negeri Sembilan State song, Nekaraku, Malaysia Berjaya. So, yeah. empat, got four song, ah, huh? And then, night, night bendera, night bendera. So, okay, I said, mana ni? I tak tahu mana. Oh, then, that time, no ways, ah, by the way, guys. No ways. Okay, right. got it. So, they were there, here, here, here. So, I pergi lah. So, I was late. My first day, I was late. Ayo. 7.45, I sampai. All singing already. Then, this uh, second person, like, second most senior, most senior tiba-tiba, masuk je, tak apa-apa, then, uh, redah saja, and then, like, okay, I have to introduce myself and so on. So, it was a bit embarrassing lah. Eh? So, that's my, if you ask me, that was be, would be my, my, uh, my experience then. And I can tell you, uh, every single one that reports into me, most of them can be my father. Because they're 50 years old, 52 years old, uh, I'm like 21. Uh, even their kids are older than me. Older than you. It was uh, quite an experience, but I learned a lot in Tanaga, to be honest. I've done many, many different portfolios since then. Um, so if I can surmise, I can say that, you know, whoever I am now, uh, a lot of them is during my formative years uh, in TNB. So I am forever grateful and eternally grateful as well for the experience. Obviously, you know, if they don't sponsor me, I will be thrown into another life. So it was, uh, yeah, I, I still look back at those years uh, very fondly. Oh, that's, that's good to hear. But, uh, I mean, all of this is during when you were younger and you were still an engineer. How did you transition into HR? Wow, another interview question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I was an engineer for maybe six years. Uh, my, my, so maybe less than that, maybe five years uh, in Tanaga, my first five years of my life. So, I was going from different, pro- uh, different assignments, different portfolios, but all engineering lah. Um, then I wanted to again find my way to KL because that's where action is, right? Takkan lah semua hidup dengan Port Eastern je. Correct. Jauh-jauh you put pergi is go to Seremban. Hey, you know, no, no, no. I, I, I got what I wanted by you know uh, saying and using that as excuse to go to the Greece Milan and get out of Jumbo. Now I need yeah. to find another excuse to come to KL. Uh, yeah. So. There, at that time, there was a project. It's called a business process improvement project. It's a project that, uh, a transformation project uh, to change the business, uh, to prepare TNB for the next maybe four years to five years, uh, then work with consultant. So at that time, it was PA consulting as well as a consulting that is still here. It's called Renoir Consulting. So it's uh, pretty boutique. So they were looking for volunteers. Mana ada volunteer? You know, TMB tak ada volunteer. Everybody wants, don't, don't want to, you know, at that time lah, to, you know, go to all these projects because you'll be sent everywhere and so on. And then your career will be terbantut a little bit. The reason is, uh, you are no longer in the mainstream. You are in the fringes because you are in the project. So people will forget about you, right? But I was 24 years old, 23 years old. Wow, that's the best. So I angkat tangan lah. So you lift your hand. Very good is, uh, by the way, guys, if you're listening to this, whoever uh, lift hands in corporate, you will definitely get it on. Because <laughs> no one else. If you say anyone wants the job, I guarantee you 99.99%, you look at me, I look at you and look down. <laughs> look at the side. So if the moment you say, okay, I want, oh, confirm you get. So I angkat tangan, dapatlah datang KL. So, Datang KL, so I was doing some, you know, project work that includes improvement of productivity. So when we look at improvement in productivity, it is not process productivity, it's people productivity, right? Yes. So they sent me, interestingly, I'm, I'm an engineer, they sent me to HR. Oh, they did it for you. Yeah, 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 because people productivity. So yeah. from people. 
Uh, okay, so I was a few that got sent to HR. Some got sent to engineering. Some mm. got sent to some different places. We are in the project. Lah. But after a year in the project, all of us need to be sent out as catalyst, change catalyst. Mm. I was chosen, the unfortunate one, uh, to be sent to HR. Now, HR, those times, is not now. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Now, now more glamorous. Lah. A little bit more. A little bit, not, <laughs> not so much of it, but a little bit more. We'll talk about that in a while. Yeah. Uh, not so glamorous. <laughs> Oh, uh, but it used to be worse. Yeah. Yeah. Because HR do three things only. Only three things. Hire. Or hire. Hire. Fire. And pay. That's it. Uh, yeah. It's That's true. It. And manage your leaves. Uh, yeah. you know, leave ke, nak pergi umrah ke, nak pergi haji ke, uh, let me do it for you. That's all, right? Not, nothing else. So I was in there. Supposed this, to... I'm sorry, the, FD, sorry, This would be around what year? Uh, 2001... Okay, so I can imagine the, you know, how... Yeah, 20 years ago. Yeah, 2001, yeah. 2002, something like that. So the uh, HR then, you guys are uh, 20 years ago. My God, you, you'll be baby still, right? No. Uh, I was... Abis, same like you. Just... Oh, really? Uh, Nada is a, a lot younger, huh? Yeah. So it is... Yeah, not great, not great, right? I, I hated it. Absolutely hated it. Because it's like, I'm, a, I'm an engineer in Tanaga. And in Tanaga, engineer is the frontliner. We are yeah. the line. Tiba-tiba send engineer pergi HR. Oh, I really hated it. Because number one, you know, I told myself, I will never, never, ever come to HR. Never say never. So I, I, I told myself, no way, no way, right? No way. And I did my, I did my tour of duty, uh, you know, completed whatever assignment I had. Then I got moved out to strategy. Oh, no. Got yeah. sent. Go to strategy. Now look at different things. Uh, okay, now this is going to be a bit controversial. Um, when I was in HR, I was saying, oh my God, these guys are not very smart, are they? <laughs> then I moved to, uh, to strategy. Okay, thank God. Now I can speak to human beings, right? Because mm. they are, you know, okay, they can, they, they can interact. Communicate, la, yeah. Uh, before that, oh my, it's so sad. By the way, I, I speak BM quite well. Very well. Yeah. Years, uh, so I, I, I speak BM all the time. And in, in HR, they don't speak any other language except other than BM. BM. 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, yeah. Yeah. So, but now, obviously, you know, different, 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 different. Even yeah. Tanaga is totally transformed, right? But yeah. at that time, uh, yeah. uh, still very old school, uh, very government. Yeah. Uh, so that's how I moved into HR. Uh, I got thrown into HR accidentally thrown into HR. I hated it. I left HR screaming, saying that, thank God, I was, I was gone. And then a few days later, I voluntarily moved back into HR. Uh, never say never. So that's, that's quite funny. Voluntarily. Why? Yeah, I need to know that one. Okay. So you put up your hand. You told me never to put up your hand unless you really wanted it. Correct, correct. Uh, I left the Naga uh, in the year 2004. Okay. Uh, because I, my, my contract uh, and born, the born. Seven years. so I completed every single second and moments of my bond and I left after uh, yeah. I remember when I, I left because it's very soon you... yeah exactly exactly, exactly. exactly. so uh, it was on the 22nd of September uh, my uh, contract I was out of there in, on the 23rd of September yeah in this month yeah this month correct correct and it's very close to anyway, So I remember uh, it was a very it's a, it's a it's a watershed moment for me because it was my very first job. And yeah. leaving your first job for another job is a yeah, terrifying experience. Uh, particularly that's the only only company you know. And you were you wonder, you know, when you move somewhere else, how would you survive? Um, so my very first job after Tanaga was with F and N Coca-Cola uh, as a uh, productivity uh, productivity engineer, productivity head, you know, uh, team lead that looks at uh, Six Sigma and, and things like that, which I did previously in Tanaga. I had some opportunity to do that, right? Uh, that's why they hired me. Uh, obviously, they, have, they, they are taking a chance because that is a, a private, you know, you know company yeah. called, you know, FMCG manufacturing. Yet, I have zero manufacturing experience because, and I'm from a TLC. So, it was... Uh, you know, in, in life, sometimes uh, you need breaks like this. Somebody take a chance. Uh, and again, it's, uh, I'm very thankful. Or else uh, I wouldn't be where I am as well uh, if yeah. some, somebody don't take a chance. So they took a chance. 
um, then that's my first uh, job out, but not doing HR at all. Not at all. So I was there for a while. Then uh, I got moved. Again, this one got moved because they are owned by the kind of same company, OCBC and uh, FNN. Uh, that's uh, where we met you. Yep, yep, yep. I met you OCBC. Long time ago. Yeah. You see, that's where the story now connects. Yeah? <laughs> um, yeah. That's when I moved to OCBC uh, because they are owned at, you know, at Singapore, used to be owned by the same foundation, the same you know, uh, owner. Uh, so I kind of seconded uh, from FNN over to, uh, after I've done you know, Coca-Cola, I went to Atlanta, blah, blah, blah. But wow. in the end, I, I came back and then they moved me to OCBC. Uh, that's my first voluntary HR job doing training because a lot of my work in productivity is training. So they moved me to do training in HR. So for the very first time, I am in HR department, not as a consultant internally or externally, as a, 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 a employee. Um, then I found out it's actually not that bad. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite sure Nabil and Nada will ask me why, why, why I said so. So I will leave that to you before, you know, because uh, there is a reason why I am still in HR. Yeah. Uh, I could have done so many different things. Uh, for example, I could be an investment banker if I wanted to because I have a CFA. Mm. Uh, I can do that as well. I can become an equity uh, research analyst because CFA, you can sign uh, equity reports, uh, share reports. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So that's one. Uh, I can teach dancing because I dance as well. Uh, I used to at least so I can still teach but although I don't think they will pay me enough. Uh, so that's two. Um, I can become an engineer as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm still an engineer. Trained. I'm, I'm trained as a, pro- I'm a professional engineer as well because uh, after so many years in the TNB, don't waste it. So when you become an IR, so I'm an IR as well. So, but I didn't choose any of this. I, I let Nada ask the next interview question because I asked too many standard interview questions. No, I mean, I, I, I think it's really fascinating that you have built yourself up um, throughout all of these years that you've given yourself options to, you know, choose where you want to go. What Engineer, you dancer, banker. Yeah, you've got so many avenues to go to. And Yeah, and, and that's what people want, right? I think nowadays from talking to a lot of young graduates, I notice they make up their mind too easily before anything. Oh, no, that's not for me. That's not for me. I'm not asking people to just like take up things that they don't enjoy. I, I, I'm a firm believer that you need to enjoy what you do, but you also need to, to take a chance on life for people to take a chance on you. Like you said, somewhere along the way, someone yeah. gave you that, that, you know, that little ticket and then you ended up there. But if you don't give yourself the chance to fall, to take risks, um, then you end up just be, you know, quite narrow your options, right? Um, so back to my question. So you've worked for many different organizations and now I understand dipped your fingers in so many different parts of, you know, careers. Um, but what's the main difference? Um, you know, you've been from TNB, you went to FNN, Coca-Cola, and then OCBC, Maybank, and then um, now Samsung. Like, you know, from throughout your entire career, you've tried and t- like tasted quite a number of organizations. Um, and different industries. Yeah, and different industries as well. So, um, what's the main difference and what is consistent that you see um, in these organizations? Okay, so I won't say it from the HR perspective, yeah? So, I'll uh, say yeah. from organization perspective. Mm. Uh, GLC, so I've been to GLC. I've been to two GLCs, uh, both very big. One is TNB, another one is Maybank, right? I've also been to multinationals, MNC, uh, British American Tobacco, Coca Cola. Oh, yeah, BAT, yeah. Uh, Samsung is a multinational as well. And I was yes. P. Brown uh, in Penang. So that is a multinational as well. So I've been to multinational. I've also been with PLC, public listed company, local company. Yeah, Masing I, was, was one. So ah, that, yes. Oh, yes. That's the only one, to be honest. It's the only one. Uh, I've also been with consulting, right? Um, which is more partnership in nature. Uh, with Watson Wyatt, no longer exists. Now it is known as Willis. Was, so uh, correct, correct. Uh, so, these are a few organizations. Did I choose that I want to go? Uh, when you're younger, you cannot choose. Uh, you just you know, roll with the punches. Now that I'm at my age and at my level, then I can choose a little bit. Uh, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I don't want to do this, you know, uh, and so on. So the main difference, 
uh, to be honest, is culture will be different. And culture has nothing to do with the type of uh, organization, whether it's multinational or GLC, nothing to do with that. It is everything to do with the context of the organization itself. For example, Maybank and TNB are both GLC, but they have very different culture. Yeah. It's very different. If anyone tells you that all GLCs are the same, it's a lie. It's not true. Mm. Uh, because of the nature of business. TNB is more monopoly, right? It's a monopolistic uh, uh, industry. Therefore, the can-do winning spirit attitude is not as keen as acute because why? You don't really have to compete. Uh, yeah. And customers must buy from you unless you can generate uh, electricity from air. <laughs> so you cannot generate air, electricity from air and sunshine, you have to buy from them. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybach, different. Competition is very keen. Uh, and I was very, very uh, privileged as well when I joined that time in 2009. Uh, the transformation was about to begin. So I was in the nice. thick of the transformation. So Maybank then wasn't Maybank now, right? Yeah. Um, now, you know, it's like the Malaysia most valuable brand. Yeah. Everyone wants to join them. Best employer, win everything. Yeah. Uh, so every one of us, uh, even people like me, alumni, are putting them uh, as a target because we need to beat them to be number one, right? Uh, so it's a bit weird, you know. Uh, I was there, I... I, I uh, a lot of those stuff I was building, so I yeah. built it. Now, yeah. it's, a bit <laughs> now you're to, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to beat them now. One of it is uh, every time you go to a Graduan Fair, you see Maybank in front of them because it's a perennial thing, right? Nobody but can. they work so hard and they're always coming up with new things. So of course, that's... of course. Of course. Yeah. That, is, that, is, that is for sure. It must be the biggest, the best. And that's the mentality. And that's the mentality. That mentality is not a, a, you know, all GLCs are the same. No. They're not. So, there is, if you ask me if there's any uh, commonality between all these different, different companies, it's uh, firstly is the winning spirit. Mm. Uh, if you want to join an organization, you need to feel that winning spirit. And you can feel it even during, uh, not even during the, the interview, yeah? while you're walking in, while you are hearing things, even when you're reading anything, you, you can feel that winning spirit. Uh, and secondly, all these companies have another thing in common is uh, they are the high emphasis on development is very key, right? Uh, that nothing is more important than development. People develop. Yeah. And how do you know that? You don't know that, right? Yes, yeah. you do. You know how you know it? Very simple. How many people that used to work in one company move on to another job and they become more successful in another job? Means the previous company have done very well to ready the yeah. uh, yeah. losing people is not to be worried and to be to be uh, to be uh, feared. Losing people is supposed to be celebrated. People are leaving you not because you're bad. It's because there are other people who will give them better opportunity than they can do better. But where did they go to school? Uh, they went to school in Maybach. Where did they go to school? They went to school in uh, in the you know in Samsung, for example. Then yeah. I'm very happy. Why? They are all Samsung alumni, and now they are very successful. Well, I think that's a testament as well. Yeah, and and they never forget where they learn most of their skills from. Yeah. Absolutely. Just like you now, you're asking me to go back into my childhood days, right, Tanaga. <laughs> And it is still as, as, as fresh as it was like yesterday because yeah. where I learned all my tricks, right? All my, uh, I, I still remember my first boss, my first mistake, my first screw up, uh, yeah. my first board meeting, uh, my first paycheck, what did I do with it? Every single detail I remember. Um, yeah. If you ask me, what did you buy with your first paycheck in OCBC? I, I have no idea. Because that is no longer such novelty anymore, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Totally understand. So I'm going to turn the tables around and yep. let you do the interviewing. So I'm going to ask you, um, you know, now that you are on the other side of the table, you meet yeah. so many young people mm -hmm. wanting to work in all of the different organizations. Um, so what do you actually look for in today's talent? Is it uh, the same or how is it now? Wow. This question also happens often because every single talk I go to, they will say, okay, what do you look for? Yeah. Uh, clearly, when I'm, I'm looking for people uh, for my assess you know, management associate program, they will ask, so what do you look for? Um, and 
some of you guys out there might say, but the other day when I asked you that question, it was a different answer. <laughs> but by and large, okay, this is general, general what I look for. Now, I don't look for content. Yep. Uh, content you can learn. Anyway, uh, content will be obsolete before you can even, whatever you learn a year ago will be obsolete now anyway. So that's not what I look for. What I look for is maybe uh, three things. Uh, and these are, unfortunately, cannot be measured so easily. Yeah. One, what I call energy. Energy is very important, which means energy tells me that you have the stamina, the endurance when things are difficult. And people nowadays like to use the word resilience, right? Resilience. Now, resilience to me is a very derogatory word. This is negative, have negative connotation. To be resilient means something bad happened. But I would turn it around by saying you need to have energy. Because having good energy is being is have resilient. Uh, yeah. You know, trying to survive this prolonged COVID and un, you know unending COVID pandemic takes a lot of energy. Yeah, and and you know your your stamina need to be there so that you can last. Uh, you know, and fight the good race and last uh, the entire duration. So that's one. And how do I see energy? Simple. When you have an interview with me. I shouldn't be asking the question. Actually, I would ask you, if any of you here are students and, uh, or, or you know, job seekers, how many times will your interview ask you, do you have any questions? And you come back with, none. I'm good. No questions so far. That's not being polite, guys. That's being stupid. <laughs> right? Being polite. When you're trying to look for a job, you're competing against people who are not so polite. They are going to be there. And energy is where I want to see that you're asking it with gusto. You are actually enthusiastic. You really can't wait to ask me and you know uh, questions. Now, uh, I don't think Nabil is married yet, but Nada is, right? Can you imagine? Would you even date a guy who is not interested if they don't ask questions? Mean not even ask questions? Yeah, of course not. Yeah. Like, so if they are not interested to ask any questions, then I'm sorry, I'm not interested in you either. And that requires, you know, this, this energy level. Second is called curiosity. Very connected to the first one. When mm -hmm. you're, you need to have curiosity. Why? You want to know more, right? Uh, you want to ask what, you know, what is the uh, you know, greatest challenge. Even guys, if you, if you cannot find something original, it's okay. Go download a list of questions. <laughs> ask. It's okay. At least pretend that you're asking questions, not yeah. asking anything. It's a travesty. It is, yeah, it's, it's a no-go. So be curious, continue to be curious and very easy for me to know whether you're curious or not. If you don't ask me any question, then I'll ask you, so hmm, what do you think of, uh, how, what do you think Brexit uh, does to the British economy? Oh, I didn't read that. Okay, so okay, never mind. Something simpler, you know. Uh, what do you think of Kanye West? Some, something totally, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, he, this is, you can train to the guy to just like BS his way through. La. Not be, I mean, if you don't know who Kanye wears, you cannot say that, you know, he's uh, Taylor <laughs> Swift's husband, la, you know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Who can Taylor <laughs> Swift, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm saying yeah. you cannot say that. Cannot say yeah. it, sorry. <laughs> right, because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do ask certain uh, other, other questions as well. For example, you know, uh, why is the excavator orange? Why is, is it because you just want to see how they think? Firstly, is to just uh, energy, yeah. in bring them out from their lull because they come to interview, they they they'll think that we were asking. So tell me a time uh, when you have to lead something in your project, <laughs> whatever. Those kind of boring stuff, right? Which I'm yeah. I'm, I'm not interested at all. So yeah. I'm interested. You're young. It's your first job. You have not no experience to talk about. You have your your CV is exactly the same like anybody's CV, same. Uh, probably from the same uh, from the same template uh, that you share with your friends. Uh, yeah. Same, exactly the same. Even the universities are the same. If you go to the same university, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yes. The same thing, good grades, SPM is always the same. You know, the ACE is, you know, <laughs> jala, jala, the, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, I suddenly will ask something like, you know, mengapa jentola warna jingga? What? <laughs> okay. So, they're like, Okay. Maybe because uh, it's, a, it's a color of danger. Oh, if color of danger, myself, I use uh, fluorescent red, right? You know, wow, you know, everybody knows. Why not red? Why not green? Why not any other color? Why not blue? 
why must it be, be, be orange? Do I have a question, answer for it? No. It's just that I, I, I think about that. Sometimes I ask, why is it orange? Maybe because tahan, tahan the mud coat. You know, if the mud kena, you know, nothing happened. Uh, no need to wash all the time. Maybe. Last longer. You never know. I, I don't really care about the, the answer, but uh, it's just to, to bring, bring you know, people. So when people read a lot more, uh, they generally will be a little bit more uh, comfortable with, you know, stupid questions. Yeah. There's no stupid question, by the way, but uh, surprising questions. And the third one, this one, unfortunately, uh, need to be trained a little bit, uh, is communication. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. this one needs to be trained a little bit. And I don't mean English articulation. I mean yeah. communication. Communication means using your, your, your uh, whatever that you have, your hands, your body language, your, lang- uh, your, your you know, articulation is good as well. Uh, and why must it be English? If you can't speak English very well, then speak well in Malay. Yeah. Or speak well in Mandarin or speak well in whatever you want. As long yeah. as you can help uh, to express your feelings and your thoughts that is good so energy curiosity and communication is three things i look out for um so if any of you gets me as a, a, a interviewer i think it'll be fun because uh, generally my interview don't last uh, my interviews don't last very long uh, but the f- question that i hate most to ask is uh tell me about yourself i i normally will ask that because it's to start off lah. And yeah. what most people will, will answer. My name is Nada. I am from Monash. Everything is in the CV already. Yeah. That's right. And if let's say I'm interviewing someone who is a bit more experienced, they will go through their, their CV. Then oh. say, wow. I got your CV before and then now you're regurgitating your CV to me. And how, what, 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 what uh, value would it bring? Uh, normally I'll cut them very quickly and say, okay, okay. Instead of you going through the CD, why don't you tell me what would be interesting? That would, what would intrigue me to ask more questions about you? What would help me understand who you are better? Uh, and I will use this. Treat me as if I'm a blind date, that you want another date with me, which is technically true, right? It's a yeah. blind date. You want another date. Second interview. The second interview, right? You want another date. Now, why, why would I want to date you again? And by the way, it is both ways. I need to impress you that you want to date me too. So yeah. it's yeah. both ways, right? So it's uh, people think that you know it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a process. It's no, it's not a process. It's a relationship. It's not a process only. Yeah. Tell me something interesting. I'm a chef. I love to cook, and you know something like that. Perfect. Nothing to do with the job itself, but it's who Nabil's you are. Nabil's not a chef. In case I'm not a chef. Thought, I just yeah, <laughs> but I wanted to, to ask something and just inject. You know, people always say, oh, HR people, they the moment you step into the door, they already know who you are, what you do, everything. They they, they can tell because through experience. Um, and just by talking to you, it's more of a confirmation of what they had in mind. Is that correct? Nope. Okay. Not true. Not true. I've been in HR for a long time. Uh, unfortunately, I'm always an engineer. I'm also an engineer. Engineer cannot assume anything before you check. Because when you assume something, yeah, bangun uh, runto, the bridge uh, fire breaks out. So you can't do that. And fire breaks out is even more less, uh, even less dangerous than hiring the wrong person. <laughs> True. Because you impact somebody's lives immediately. Right? So, no, that's not true. That's not true. However, however, uh, I need to qualify that, that HR people are trained over so many years that they can make a judgment call after a very quick discussion, maybe 15 minutes, rather than having a one hour uh, mm. uh, interview, maybe even 15 minutes. They probably have a good idea uh, about what they are looking for if they are asking the right questions. Uh, but I haven't you know, uh, seen anyone or technically, personally, I haven't done it before that when people walk in the room, yeah, this this person is like a superstar, uh, or this person is really bad. Uh, number one is unfair. Uh, number two is I want to ensure that you know the building you know doesn't collapse uh, if yeah. I did not check properly. So if there are HR people listening to this, you may disagree with me. But then again, maybe you are smarter than me lah. <laughs> I am not a fortune teller, so I cannot just decide on something uh, without checking. Well, That's good ne- news. It's never fair to judge a person before you actually know the person. Yeah. No? Correct. Yeah, but uh, that that's when before you meet the person and before you hire the expectations. But 
is there any expectations from you once they're in the company? Okay, now this is uh, obviously we have because uh, we have chosen, we have gone through the process. Now that you're in, um, expectations are obviously going to be there, right? Uh, so now you're asking me whether my expectation as a, uh, as a line manager or expectation as HR or expectation as a you know, top management. So three have different expectations, right? If I'm a line manager, my expectation would be, okay, you do your job well. Hopefully you can help me be successful. I'm, so I'm very selfish here. So obviously all bosses want the same thing. Your yes. job is to help me be successful. You my, take care of me, I take care of you. My job is to help you grow, get promoted, learn more so that you can find another job somewhere else. Uh, yeah. on. That's, that's, you know, fair game. Life. Fair yeah. game. Fair game. Uh, your job is to help me, uh, my job is to help you. So very simple. But as an organization, oh, organization always wants you to stay there forever. Even now, I, I don't know where, you know, what reality they're in. They are still thinking that uh, organize, most organizations, including mine, uh, want people to stay forever. Because, you know, we train, we spend money. Uh, I, I always like this quote uh, that a HR person talking to the CFO or the CEO talking to the CFO. I'm sure you have heard of this. It's a super cliche thing. Uh, the CFO, uh, you know, the, the CEO said, yeah, I want to train this person because this person has potential. So I will train this person. I want to, you know, push this person up. Then the CFO will say, imagine uh, if you train this person and the person leaves. Isn't it a waste of money? Very typical. Then CEO normally will come back and say, well, Imagine you don't train this person and the person stay. Oh my God. That's, that's horrible. Hard. Yeah. So it's, it's very cliche, but I can only tell you that this is generally what people think. So expectations from organization is you do your job well and you do your job for as long as you possibly can for as little money as you possibly can. So this is general, right? Um, line manager don't care about what company pay you, right? Line manager only care about you. You help me, I help you. You finish. As HR, whoever wants a HR career, your job is to manage and balance the two. Oh, you are between both sides, and that is the the greatest difficulty. Why? Because you are also management. You are also CFO's best friend and greatest nemesis. You are also CEO's right hand person and his conscience as well. Yeah. So you are a supporter of the CEO, yet you are also the conscience of the CEO. The CEO needs to be told this is not the right thing to do. Yet, you've got to tell it in a very nice way that you keep your job. With CFO, you want money from him, yet you need to be nice enough to say that if we doubt this money, your job will be in jeopardy as well. All these have to be balanced. 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 So it's pretty interesting. Um, Juggling, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, that's why I enjoyed it because uh, it's continued to challenge me uh, after so many years. It's dealing with people, it's HR. It is. Yeah. Um, about, uh, well, of all these things, I'm sure it's, it's really tough, but what is the toughest decision you have to make while you're on the job as a HR person? Uh, you asked me this question. Uh, remember just now I said, you know, HR fundamentally do three things. Yeah. After many years, we still fundamentally do three things. But obviously now you have talent management, analytics, you know, all this well-being, all these new things, right? Rewards, yeah. all these new things. But fundamentally, we do three things. We hire people, give people jobs. We pay people when they do their jobs well. And we fire people when they don't do it well. So technically, these are the three things that we still do fundamentally, right? If you need to, you know, distill it down. Of the three things I hate the most, obviously, I love paying people the most, uh, hopefully. But I also... Very, very uh, close second is to, you know, hire people and give people jobs, right? But if I can help it, I do not want to do the third one. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's my job as well. Um, and it is very difficult, even now. I've done this job for long. I've done many, many uh, firing in my career. I can tell you every single one of them I remember. Every single one I remember. I've done not less than 30 Personally, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not as asking people to do. Huh? That's very different. Yeah, yeah, asking yeah. people to do is very easy. Then, <laughs> wait, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Make sure it doesn't come back to me. Different. Yeah. So I've personally done it. Uh, it's very, very tough. 
uh, it's first not something you can get used to, I guess. No, no, because the person that you let go have to go back and tell their kids. Yeah. Oh, their houses, their family, that they lost a job. And for a lot of people, it's not just a matter of pride. It's a matter of economic uh, sustenance, right? Sustenance, you, you, they, they need a job. And very unfortunately, sometimes organizations, uh, they don't have a choice. And talking about that, even personally, uh, I have experience as well, right? Uh, I haven't been retrenched in my life, right? But in the course of my career, uh, there are times when uh, either I took the easy way out and said that I resigned, right? Or sometimes you kind of outstate your welcome, but you didn't realize it. And somebody got to like kind of nudge you and said, uh, maybe you should, you know, explore. And maybe you should, uh, you know, find your happiness elsewhere. And I, I think when you treat people with dignity and respect, that is when you continue to be respected and people will see you as a role model because you do it well and you give people dignity and you allow people to, uh, you know, you know, Asian, right? We, we, we save uh, people's face. And to me, some of the, you know, uh, American or Western uh, theory saying that, no, it's just cutthroat clinical. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't deliver out they go they know this because when they sign the contract they know that this is the expectations yeah. we are human beings we are flesh and blood uh, and what we do really hurt people so yeah. yeah if you ask me what's the toughest thing that I, I do as a HR director is letting people go uh, every time I let people go I feel the guilt regardless of the circumstances sometimes they really deserve it yet I don't think every, anybody deserves to be sacked, to be honest. I understand. I, I don't yeah. think so, right? They, at least not in my book. Uh, people shouldn't be sacked, but people can be managed, can be facilitated, they can be informed, they can be communicated. Motivated. Let people find options. Uh, they know that they, they, nobody wants to do you know, badly, right? Nobody wants to fail. So they will want to find options as well. It's just that we need to find you know, the platform so that everyone turns out to be all right yeah wow wow i never expected that, that but yeah it's it is it's definitely true. the toughest uh. yeah. nobody likes doing it um so after the past few days we've actually been asking and collecting questions from you know hmm. some of our social media so we have a few i've shortlisted i'll just ask maybe one or two only because okay. um, it's almost been an hour Fast, huh? Oh, I've been talking <laughs> okay. too much. <laughs> no, nice. So, um, one of the questions was about you know passion or versus paycheck. Which one is more crucial for us to pay attention to in you know job seeking, especially now? Um. Okay, I'll be very practical. If your dad is a tansri that owns, uh, you know, thirty five different companies, passion. Mm. if your family depends on you to bring home bread, nasi lemak, put food on the table, paycheck. So there is no intelligent answer for this because if I tell you paycheck, you say, nah, that is so, you know, not visionary, so yes. mercenary. If I tell you passion, you are so unrealistic because there are people who need the, the money, right? Yes. So it, it, all, it all depends on the situation. Uh, I can only share with you uh, my my. I came from a very uh, middle, lower middle class family. My 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 dad, uh, my late dad uh, was a teacher. My mom was a homemaker, uh, and my dad was a teacher in a very small little village in a small town. So, if let's say I did not get a scholarship uh, to go for my studies, I would not be able to go overseas. So, I would definitely have to do STPM and hope that my results are good enough for me to go to a university uh, in Malaysia. So I was very, very honored and privileged to, to get that scholarship. So if you ask me, passion is never in my consideration because it has to be paycheck to start off. Now, as I grow in my career, uh, I become a lot more comfortable, obviously. Uh, you know, I, I, I grow over so many years. Then at a certain threshold, Suddenly, you start thinking, now, paycheck is not important anymore simply because, now, it's easy for me to say because 
you know, how many houses can you buy, right? How many, how many beds can you sleep? And now you can only sleep on one bed. You yeah. can eat one meal, two meals, three meals a day. How many, you know, yeah. With more money, you can't eat more meals. You can't be sleeping in you know, yeah. 10 different beds, right? So it's, you always sleep in one bed. Uh, you can't sleep more than in one. So, but that's what when, when you decide, okay, perhaps uh, following your passion, doing something you really enjoy uh, will sustain you for longer because you get tired after so many years, right? Yeah, so this is my 20, hmm, 20. Yeah, coming to, wow, it's a long time. Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 1998 was uh, where I started. Now it's 2021. <laughs> it's, uh, At least you took up dancing on the side. And like you said, you learned dancing. So like you, it can be a, a balance. Um, but I think you have to see at certain points of your life, which is the priority. Correct, correct. Um, and but, then it changes. Uh, vocation. Uh, dancing is ah, yeah, la, yeah, la. It's a hobby. Yeah. yeah, hobby, hobby. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Have any other questions from the... I think there's... Uh, we can do one more. Um, you know, as HR and, you know, do you think that championing and advocating for women empowerment in the workforce is necessary in this day and age? Okay. I don't have to pause for this. Uh, I'm just saying... How am I going to emphasize this? The answer is definitely, absolutely, of course, and any other uh, superlatives. Um, but I wouldn't say women empowerment. Yeah? Because I think uh, you just use words, uh, people use women. But women is, is not, we shouldn't even use women as a adverb or as a noun. Because there is no difference between men and women. It's the same. Uh, what I would say is empowerment as a whole. Now, empowerment of people or segment who are unempowered. There, there are, un, uh, unfortunately, at the moment, perhaps women are one segment that is unempowered. Another one is the, the minority, right? The minority are also unempowered. The disabled, for example, they are also unempowered. Uh, even men, uh, in, you know, marginalized men are also uh, and unempowered as well. So I would use empowerment as a overall overarching concept. It's very, very important. But I understand. It's like Dasa Economy Baru. When there is a problem for it, we need to ensure that we are able to you know, uh, mitigate it. Therefore, women empowerment is, is very key. And in HR, unfortunately, very good. Yeah, in HR, um, women empowerment is not a problem because I think we have more women in HR yeah. than men. I am the unempowered one, <laughs> the minority, um, because... Uh, I, 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 there are so many, so many power women out there that uh, become yeah. role models. Uh, I'm sure you know some of them. Uh, yes. You know, Dato Noramana, for example, is one. Uh, yeah. Is always a role model. Uh, Nadia is another one. Uh, yeah. uh, SP Satya and so many more. So many, so many more. These are all local, you know, strong women who is advocating and championing uh, women rights, empowerment. And uh, if you ask them, I think they would agree with me saying that why women empowerment? There's no such thing. Is it empowerment in general? Empowering everyone, whoever yeah. that requires uh, the opportunity and platform to showcase, uh, you know, what they are capable of, should be given opportunity. So, yeah, my it's a very long answer, but I agree, hundred percent advocacy for uh, any type oh. of empowerment, especially those who are marginalized. Totally yeah, I, agree. I think that's very very good answer because. As we become, you know, as the world evolves and we become more aware, I think it's important for us to then create the environment that allows everyone to now thrive, you know, regardless of how, who they are, where they come from or whatever that they have against them. And any difficulties. I have one last question. Before yeah, we... uh, Nabil, come. Yes. I was thinking because you were talking about uh, role models like uh, Dato Nora Manaf and all, I'd like to ask, who is your role model? Oh... I've got many. <laughs> okay. If I have to mention one, uh, yeah. in corporate, la, I've got a role model that is live role model. Uh, let's, let's take a corporate one. Right? Okay. My role model is, uh, when I knew him, he was Datuk Sri. Now he's Tan Sri. Right? Oh, I know who I'm guessing. Don't know him. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you want to try? <laughs> no, don't. No? Yeah. Uh, Wahid Omar. Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, my role model until now. Uh, he will be. Uh, he is one person who remembers my name. And I'm a lowly, lowly vice president in Maybank. Every time he sees me, he remembers my name. 
after I left and after he left, he still remembers. Yeah. He's and an amazing person. Interestingly, uh. I normally will send uh, Selamat Hari Raya uh, to him and he replies. That is after he left. Uh, he replies as well. But what I learned from him is a few things. One, humility. Mm. Everything. He is the, one of the most humble person I've ever met. Yeah. At that station, right? At his station at his, his, his level cannot be more humble. He's the hum, one of the humblest men I've ever, ever met. Number two, he taught me uh, one thing, which I continue to, if you, if you, go, you know, read my, my LinkedIn posts and so on, um, I always say fundamentals and basics is key every time, right? And I learn it from him. That focus on the fundamentals, focus on the basics. Don't worry about everything else. When you do well, in your basics, you will do well. So that is number two. And number three um, is treat everyone, everyone at any station with the same level of respect. Uh, mm. and yeah, so it's, uh, he taught me that you don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to be, you know, out there. You need to be, you know, uh, you know super gung-ho. You don't need to be, an, you know, a type A personality to be successful because he is successful. Uh, and I like his kind of success and I want to emulate his kind of success because that is success that is, you know, tempered with a lot of humility. And um, yeah, he's my role model uh, wow. and he will continue to be uh, for a long time, I would imagine. Well, I hope one day I can get him on the show. Yeah. Yeah, and I will certainly tune in and yeah. hope that, uh, you know, I can you know, ask him some questions. Why don't you try? Why don't you try? Yeah, I think I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, we'll try. Thank, thank you for the tip. <laughs> I'm sure he will be more than happy to do it. He will be. Yeah. yeah? Right. Uh, then please uh, let me know because we'll do. I'll be, you know, right up front. Okay. Uh, front of uh, or the seat up front. <laughs> I'll take your questions for him also. <laughs> I will, I will. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, wanted. I think we're just at the end right now. Just gonna wrap up. I wanted to, you know, on behalf of Grad One and everything, just say thank you. I think you've shared so much insights, um, a lot of personal stories, which I think people appreciate because we, we can learn from your experience. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Uh, Nabil, anything you wanna add? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just to say thank you again for being the first to kick off the series. We'll hope to continue this uh, and get more interesting speakers. I hope. About. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Uh, truly, it's uh, you know, it's ten pm, and I rarely get asked you know a question about my life at ten. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, you know, I hope it's interesting enough for the listeners and also the viewers. Uh, it's just uh, I'm a very simple person. Uh, you know, don't have very you know extravagant you know. Uh, stuff to talk about uh, but I hope that you know things that I shared uh, will be at least some source of uh, knowledge or inspiration for you to apply uh, to whatever situation or circumstances that you are having right now and I wish uh, all of you um, to keep well yeah stay safe stay healthy uh, and I cannot wait uh, to go back to engaging uh, some of uh, I really miss I really miss engaging people life um, it's, it's, uh, I hope, I hope, I hope, uh, next year, yes, April, hope. hopefully things will be better. Let's hope. Uh, Radwan, um, uh, UKC or whatever you want to call it, uh, the yeah. Malaysian career fair, uh, will, will, will continue and, and re resume. Uh, yes. and please, uh, contact me because uh, I will be the first to sign up again because now confirm next year I think a lot of people will sign up <laughs> <laughs> everyone <laughs> <is> you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much